Hello world, it's Siraj, and today I wanna to talk about a decentralized application called Essentia. So what Essentia is, is essentially a gateway to the decentralized web. So if you are familiar with the decentralized web, then you know that there are a bunch, and what, even if you're not familiar, there are a bunch of different apps that run on these protocols that are not a part of the traditional web that we're used to, right? So, you know, Google, Apple, Facebook, these are centralized apps, but there's a whole host of other types of apps, decentralized apps out there that normal people are not a normal people, normal users of the internet that are using a standard web browser like Chrome or Safari, they don't have access to them because in order to reach these decentralized apps, you need to a, either download a Chrome extension like MetaMask, for example, for Ethereum-based apps, or you to download a, you know, a separate browser like Brave or you know, whatever, um, Mist. And this is just not um, the way to move forward with this field. We need something that's going to act as a gateway between the centralized web and the decentralized web. And what Essentia is, is that. It is that gateway. It's, a, it's this interoperability layer between the centralized web and the centralized web. So um, we're gonna learn about Essentia in this video, and also we're gonna learn about uh, cross-protocol bridging, blockchain seeds, a bunch of you know different things about the blockchain just by learning about Essentia, multi-signature transfers, uh, encryption, and cross-chain atomic swaps. All of it tonight is is very technical jargon, but in this video we're going to cover those those things as well. Okay, so I want to start off with a demo of this service, so you can access it at Essentia. One. Definitely check out the link. Um, Link is gonna be in the video description. But what you can do is you can try it out immediately. So you can click, we can click on this try button. Essentia 1.0, 15,000 users are already using this, great. Um, so now I'm gonna create a password, password, whatever I want it to be. And once I've created a password, what it's going to do is it's going to create my own profile in a decentralized way such that I own my data and then if any service then wants to use my data, they have to ask me for that data, okay? So it's a, it's a user owned, uh, the user owns their data in this gateway. And so the reason I call it a gateway is because there are so many different types of decentralized apps out there, right? There's Steemit, there's Kyber, there's CryptoKitties, there's, you know, whatever, Augur, DTube, and there should be a way to access all of them. Now, some of them have this kind of bridge between HTTP and whatever else they're storing their data on, you know, IPFS, SIA, what have you, but some of them don't. And so this is a way to kind of con combine all of them into one, one kind of, yeah, gateway or view that you can see them all. So the first part of Essentia is it is it is a wallet for all wallets. So you can have your Ethereum wallet in here, you can have your Bitcoin wallet, you can have whatever type of wallet, you can have it here. And they're, they're adding more over time, which I think is very cool. Like I, I want to use a service that can combine all these wallets together. So that's the first part. The second part is storage, right? So this is a decentralized storage platform. We can use IPFS, we can use Swarm, we can use Storage A, and then once we have some file, we can upload it, and so it's going to then store that file. And I'll talk about the use cases of this in a second, but that's one part of it. The other part is for us to be able to log in to any of these um, blockchains, you know, the Ethereum blockchain, what have you. And now, good, I successfully logged in with my address, continue, great. And there's also an exchange, right? So um, this is, we're gonna talk later about cross-atomic um, swaps, but this is an exchange. We can exchange any kind of coin with any other coin. And lastly, it's 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 a it's a DAP store, not an app store, but a DAP store. So we can find other decentralized apps in this uh, platform. We can see, you know, Aragon status. I can add status. Okay, so now I've added status, and now now that I've added status, it's here in my in my dashboard. So now I can use status. I can send messages to people. Status, by the way, is a decentralized messaging platform, and so now I have access to that. Okay, so. Very, very cool stuff. Um, and right, so my point is that, the, is that the decentralized web is fragmented and there are so many different protocols out there. And just because there are so many different protocols that all you know say, say different things, it doesn't mean that one is any better than the other. There should be a way to combine all of them together, right? We're talking about not just us as developers or you know, enthusiasts in this technology using this, we're talking about our you know, grandmas and our grandpas and just everybody, people who are not as familiar with technology being able to access these services and, and this really does that in a great way. 
And so one thing I found very, you know, very cool about this was that when we log in, what it does is it creates a unique seed for us, right? So it's a unique seed that acts as our identity. Now, this is an identity. So first of all, many companies and people have tried to create one identity that accesses all the different services, right? All the way back to the 90s, Microsoft tried this with their, I think it was called One Service or One Something. Anyway, it didn't work out. But now that we have the blockchain and we have these new methods of distributed consensus, that's um, vision, that dream is now possible. So there's one um, one login that you can use for all of these services. And so that's that's a great feature of Essentia. Right, so, and what, what it also lets us do is it also lets us bridge protocols together. For example, HTTP and say IPFS. We are accessing this Essentia app using HTTP and we are then able to upload our data to say IPFS, which is its own protocol, right? It's IPFS colon slash slash whatever it is. The content address, not the HTTP address or the IP address. So this is very cool. And I wanna, sh I wanna show you for a second how this works, how this kind of cross bridging works. So Essentia uses this, but if we look you know, deep down the stack into how this works, inside of IPFS's Go uh, repository, we can, see this, um, we can see this file called gateway.go. So if you haven't um, done Go before, don't worry about it. Go is a very beautiful, elegant, simple language, which we'll learn, um, which we'll see why you know, as the video progresses. But Essentially, think about it. So you can be an IPFS node. Anybody can be an IPFS node. They can store data on their computer. And so there has to be some bridge to be, to, to be able to access that IPFS data from the HTTP web. And so this is one way to do that with this gateway. And so the, what the gateway is, is it says, Let's see, we can see inside of this function that any node can be a gateway. They have that option to be a gateway. So in the handler, we can see that we have these headers for HTTP that are being sent from this IPFS node. So it's essentially an IPFS node can double as an HTTP node. So they have their own HTTP server and they act as the bridge. So whenever you're accessing this HTTP server slash IPFS node, you are then able to access everything that that IPFS node is connected to, which is every other IPFS node. Now, so does this take away from some of the benefits of decentralization? Yes. But does it take away all of the benefits? No. Can What I mean is, can you censor that HTTP node? Yes, but the data will still live, right? So that HTTP website can be censored, but the data will still live, which is, um, which is a great thing. Anyway, I just wanted to talk a bit about why bridging is important and how Essentia does that, you know, by by implementing this. Okay, so um, one, so it's got it's it's got some great features, right? So it's it, it it does a lot. It's not just like a you know one wallet for everything. It's it's a wallet for different cryptocurrencies. There's voting. There's a voting system. You don't have to use a password for all of these de all of these decentralized apps. Uh, it's multi-device. So because it because it runs in the browser and you don't need a Chrome extension, you can run it on a phone, you can run it on a desktop app, you can run it in your browser, a lot of different options here. And uh, one thing I think is very cool is that because it's got this decentralized storage uh, option, you can um, upload your KYC information to it and then participate in multiple ICOs with just a few clicks. So if you are a crypto investor, then you can invest in all of them with just a few clicks. It's a very simple way to do that. And so um, also because these different blockchains are integrated, you can program scripts in a single language, which is very useful. And you can orchestrate operations between services. So they're working on an API and that's coming out soon, but that's gonna let you, you know, work with these different blockchains. So if you think about it, like, okay, so it's got a lot of features. So where does it fit into this space, right? We, we have different options for, you know, different things like, you know, a social network, decentralized esteem it. For messaging, it's not WhatsApp, it's status. For remote jobs, it's not Upwork, it's Ethlance. Uh, for storage, it's not Google Drive, it's IPFS. Uh, where does this fit in? Well, it, it's kind of at that operating system layer, right? If you think about it, it's, it's a gateway. It stores your identity and your data. That's something you want to keep really close to you, right? So what, what, what do you keep closer to you? What's, what's at the lowest like, level of the stack, right? It's your operating system. And so this acts as, a, as an operating system layer. And um, 
Right, so all of these different cryptocurrencies, they use, um, they use a seed. They use a seed to uh, verify that you are the unique owner of some wallets, right? So what Accenture does is it creates a seed and that seed acts as your ID for all of your wallets. And um, it does it in a very interesting way. So what I wanna do is I want to talk about seeds. So we're gonna code a seed in a second, okay? We are going to code a seed, and we're gonna do this in JavaScript. I've still got this evolution simulator up. I gotta remove that. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna code this in, in Solidity to give you an example of you know, how seeding works in, 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 the, in the context of Essentia and just in general because it's a great uh, learning exercise. So if we have a contract, and this is in Solidity by the way, but this is just like you can use any language for this. But so if we have a contract and we want to say generate a random number, okay, so a seed is a random number, okay, and so one way we can do that is inside of a blockchain by looking at the blocks themselves and then modif and then using those values to create a random number. So I'll show you how to do that. So we can create a function that is called random number gen. It's, it's very, it's just one line. It's a one-liner function, right? So we have the header, which is random gen, and it's gonna generate a random number uh, given some seed. So I'm just gonna say some value, like two, three, four, some scalar value. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna to return a random number. So I'll call this, again, this integer, a random number. That's it, okay? So how do we do this? I'm going to, in, a, in one line, I'm gonna return Okay, it's gonna be an integer, an unsigned integer, that's what that U means. And I'm gonna use SHA-3, which is, a, which is an encryption protocol, to then encrypt the contents of this. And what is this? This is a block. Um, this is not just a block in the blockchain, this is the, that block's hash. And then we're gonna take that block's number, we're gonna subtract one from it, combine that with the seed value that we had before, run modulo 100, which means that this is gonna create a random number between zero and 100 based on the last block hash. That's it, okay? So we're gonna do um, modulo 100, and that's it. This single line of code in Solidity will generate a random number based on the last block's hash between zero and 100. See how simple that was? And this lives on the blockchain. It's using the randomness or the, uh, the, de the, the determinism of the blockchain to then create numbers that are non-deterministic, um, which you can do in a single line of code. So I just wanted to show that for a second. Uh, and there are different ways of generating unique numbers. Anyway, technical overview time with Essentia. So there's a lot of modules here. If we look in the white paper, there are quite a lot of modules. There are 29 different modules in this uh, white paper, uh, which is very ambitious. And if we look into it, you can see a list of all, all these boxes are the modules. ES, S home, S core, S base, S auth, S, you know, S config. And you know, Ethereum is also very complex and a lot of blockchains are very complex. So, and they've integrated with Ethereum. So, so core is really interesting. So core is, you know, as you would think, the core of the application. Um, it, it allows the ID to destroy, restore, and backup you know, itself. Um, it also allows for the creation of multi-signature capabilities. So multi-signature transactions are very popular in the blockchain community and this allows for that. So the idea is that if I want to send you some money and I don't know you, I would need a third party to be that intermediary, Amazon, eBay, you know, Upwork, what have you. But if we can automate that process, then that would make our lives easier and we could do this faster. So multi-signature transactions originated in the Bitcoin blockchain. The idea is that you have three people and it requires two of three signatures to then um, make that transaction happen. Right, so the third person would be a third party. It could, it could be a single person, it could be your friend, it could be anybody. It doesn't have to be a single you know, company. It could be any person. And so here's an example uh, in JavaScript using the Bitcoin library to show you an example of multi-signature transactions which Essentia uses, essentially. We see uh, this list of private keys right here. Okay, these are, my, these are some private keys. And we're gonna take three of them. So, right, so we're taking three of those keys and we're creating a script using those. All right, in this script, we're going to perform multi-sig. Right, so now we are going to add an input and an output and sign 
uh, one of those transactions, okay? So right here. We're going to push that transaction to the network, right? So we've created a single transaction. We've pushed it to the network. Now we're gonna do the same thing for another transaction right here, right? The same exact thing. And then we're gonna do that for a third transaction, just like that. And the, the, the unique part here is this bitcoin.scripts.multisig output. So because we've pushed all three of those transactions to the blockchain, we've also signified to the blockchain that, hey, this is a multi-signature output. So we have three transactions, multi-signature output on the blockchain, and now uh, each of, two of those three uh, addresses has to then send a transaction to the blockchain saying that yes, I agree. And because of that, that you know, multi-sig output function there, if two of those three send that transaction, the funds are unlocked. And that's multi-signature. Okay, so um, yeah. Anyway, so about ESS base. So there's a, there's a base module as well. And it, it, basically you can, it, it acts as this API to core. So it's this high level API to what's essentially the core of the of the system. Also for authentication, there's this there's this auth module that lets you control uh, different parts of this very complex uh, network of modules, which 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 you need. And then there's bridge, right? So there should be some way, either off chain, on chain, and a hybrid approach to be able to transfer value between all of these different blockchains that are integrated into Ascension. And so the way to do this is an atomic cross-chain swap, and I'll, I want to talk about that at the end. And but there's one more module, ESS Pay, which uh, it encrypts the it encrypts the wallets. Um, it acts as a plugin to connect and manage other payment processors, and it it's basically like the store of value for all of your different cryptocurrencies. So Essentia has its own cryptocurrency as well, and there's going to be an ICO on June 25th, which is surprisingly soon. And you can see a link to that in the description. And when it comes to encryption, there's a lot of different ways to encrypt uh, a payment or in general anything. And this is what this is what I mean when I say Go is a great language because you can you can encrypt so many different ways using the built-in libraries. I mean, look in this single crypto library that Go has. We can use SHA-256, random, AES, cipher, hex, you know, and a bunch of different encryption algorithms in a single line, right? So encrypt just means run these functions on this data essentially. And that's why Ethereum um, IPFS and a bunch of other blockchain protocols that Essentia has integrated has used Go. Uh, right, so the last thing I want to talk about are atomic cross-chain swaps, which are essential to this platform and in general just a very important topic. So the idea is that if I, if I have some Ethereum and you have some Bitcoin and I want to transfer some Ethereum to you and you want to transfer some Bitcoin to me, how do we do that? So the way that traditional, I guess you would say traditional, it's only been five years or whatever, way to do this in cryptocurrency is to have an exchange, right? So Coinbase or you know what, what, whatever, Kraken, and they act as a third party. So we got rid of banks, but we still have this third party. So the way to get over that is to implement what's called an atomic cross-chain swap. And so this is a protocol of saying, I'm person A, you're person B. I want to transfer value to you, you want to transfer value to me. How do we do that with that in an automated way? So the, what happens is, person A, me, my funds are sent to this escrow in the blockchain. Person B's funds are sent to the escrow on their blockchain, okay? So then their funds are locked, your funds are locked, we both receive a message that you know each other's funds are locked, and then off-chain, we're both gonna agree on an exchange rate, okay, so we'll say, you know what, let's, let's do it for this much, two Bitcoins is worth one Ether or whatever. We'll then, we'll then send a message to our, to our blockchains that indeed we did get it, and because they, they got that message, the, the funds will be transferred. And so cross-chain atomic swaps are a subject that is, it's a, it's a very interesting subject, if you want to see an example of this in Solidity, I, you know, this is, this is the most simple example I could find. Uh, but check out this example. It's written in Solidity, very simple stuff. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so decentralized gateways are very important to this space. Essentia is a great example of that. Uh, links to everything I've talked about are gonna be in the video description. Please subscribe for more programming videos. And for now, I've got to link all the blockchains. So thanks for watching.